Hello and welcome to Pursuit of Perfect System. In this video, we're just gonna have a little chat about one of those things that exists in the hi-fi community, one of those things that's argued about and discussed at length, always a, you know, a difference of opinion with it, and it's one of the hi-fi laws. And I don't mean sod's law because we all know that's real and there's no real need to debate that. I actually mean the law of diminishing returns. Is that a real thing? Does it actually exist? And is it something that we need to pay attention to and bear in mind? Thinking about the actual law of diminishing returns itself, why does that actually exist? And it's, it's pretty obvious why that exists, because we're all hi-fi enthusiasts and the majority of us are interested and keen to improve our systems. And we, we think about it and, you know, I'm sure everybody's the same. I, I feel like this is that there'll be products within our system that we feel are the weaker links. Um, not sure what gives us the impression that they're the weaker links. It could be, you know, opinions based on the review of that product. That's probably a good reason. It could be the value of, of that particular product. It might be, you know, a hundred pound product in amongst the system of every product costing two thousand pound or more. So obviously, because of the low value of it by comparison, that's automatically the weak link. We all go through that mindset, and when we're thinking, right, I want to improve my system sound. Normally, the first thing is, right, well, I want to change the weak link. I want to upgrade the weak link and everybody must have thought that way at least once but probably they're still thinking about it now and they, they think right I'm going to change that product so they change their hundred pound product and they think right to get a significant improvement I need to spend maybe 500 pounds on it or maybe a thousand pounds so we go big and we buy something really expensive to replace something that's maybe it's really cheap this is just an example and we put it in the system and we get some benefit but we don't necessarily get the benefit of the £4,000, so it's okay because the law of diminishing returns exists. Does it exist or is that just a very easy cop out for the fact that we're not actually hearing the benefit of that system or is it, is it an excuse that maybe the £1,000 product isn't actually that much better than the £100? These are all the things that are argued about and debated. Years ago I was 100% convinced that the law of diminishing returns exists because I remember sitting listening to the system thinking this sounds amazing, there's no way on earth it can get any better than this. And I've thought that maybe four or five times. This is, this is amazing, this system sounds amazing, it can't get any better than this. And then I've gone and heard other systems that have shown me clear as day that there's other areas or totally that the sound can get a hell of a lot better than what I was actually experiencing. So that opened my eyes to you know, areas of improvement or ways and means of improvement. Why do we have the law of diminishing returns? Because another reason I feel we do is when, we, when we're when we testing, when we're demoing our systems out, I'm sure everybody's got some familiar content or content they're listening to at that time that they really enjoy that probably sounds good. You know, I guess most people enjoy it, the content they listen to that sounds good. I think that's probably a big part of it as a, as a hi-fi enthusiast. You may love some music, but if it sounds awful on your system, you're probably not going to listen to it because that's just not what the whole idea of listening to hi-fi is all about, is it? So, you know, so we, we, we get our product in and we put it on test and we listen to, I don't know, the 20 songs or the 20 albums or whatever it is that are sounding great to us at that time that we're really enjoying. And guess what? They sound great. Then the next day, we start going through our album collection and our music collection, listening to the songs that maybe haven't sounded that great before. And we're expecting that equal improvement to come with those songs. And we don't actually get that. And we start getting inconsistency and we start getting disappointment creeping in. And then that thing, buyer's remorse can kick in. Oh, wow, did I actually buy the right product? Did I actually buy the right thing? Now, two, two, you know, <laughs> things can pop into, you know, audio files. Mine, one can be, well, it's just the law of diminishing returns. That's just how it is. Or the other one can be, that's the source quality. Let's just blame the source quality. And is, are those things real? Do are they the real things to be concentrating on? Years ago, I would have said yes. I remember visiting one of the big hi-fi publications, the industry, one of the industry magazines, the big, one of the big ones. And I was talking to the technical editor there and I asked him you know, a lot of questions. I really grilled the guy on um, lots of things that I was interested in. And one of the questions I asked him was the law of diminishing returns. Does it exist? Is it real? And his answer to me was, Terry, he looked me straight in the eye and he said to me, Terry, nope, it doesn't exist. Things just keep getting better. And that stuck with me. You know, that definitely stuck with me. And I think that's definitely been part of the fuel of my fire that's pushed me and made me want to test and try lots of different things to get better sound. Over the years of, of trying and testing and doing lots of different things and hearing lots of different systems, 
yeah, at, at this precise moment, I would say the law of diminishing returns doesn't exist. I would say instead of that, we hit a limiting factor with either our system, our setup, or our room. And I think those three are actually more powerful factors. And you know, a, a setup limiting factor, most people are listening to systems in domestic rooms, they're not acoustically designed rooms. They're not rooms with any fault to the acoustics or the frequency response of speakers. Some people do, but the vast majority don't. Even if you do like this room, we've got acoustic treatment in here, we've still got limiting factors. We can still only have acoustic treatments where they can go, where there's doors, obviously we can't. The seating position's not perfect, but we've got other things to think about, access through the room and stuff. So, you know, it's, it's difficult to get things absolutely perfect, but that is straight away a huge limiting factor, number one. The second number limiting factor, I think, again, I mentioned it, frequency response from speakers, room acoustics in general, that's another really Really big limiting factor and then you get the other limiting factor which is you know another snake oil area mains quality and stuff to me that's definitely another limiting factor with, with system everybody's got different experience my experience has been which is why there's all acoustic treatment in this room which is why we spend so much time and effort and money on mains conditioning which is why we measure frequency responses which is why we use direct live is because and before direct live we used other means to do a similar thing the reason we do it is because we know the importance of those areas and how much of a limiting factor they can be. And how, how do I know that? How do I know that's important? Well, because I've had five different pairs of speakers in this room. I went through four different pairs of pretty much identical speakers, two-way design bookshelf speakers, six, mid, six to six and a half inch mid-bass driver and a tweeter. And they all sounded very similar. And you know, it would be it'd be very easy to blame the law of diminishing returns on that. However, come now, several years later, we put a pair of two-way, six and a half inch uh, base, base mid speakers in this room and they don't sound nothing like how the several pairs sounded years ago, nothing like it. And had those pairs sounded like these, we probably would still have them in the system. That is the, the, the honest reality of it. So, limiting factor taken away, room. Limiting factor taken away, mains quality. So that allows us to hear more of the money spent elsewhere. That, that, that is my current stance on it. The law of diminishing returns doesn't exist. It's not real. We just have to find the limiting factor. So if, if you're interested and keen to progress and improve your system, I'm not saying this is how you have to do it. Although if you, if you want this type of sound, this is how you get it. You need to find, I think at the moment, people and audio files need to find that limiting factor within their room. I understand everybody's got compromises, domestic compromises and stuff, so do we. We just have to try and work around them the best that we can. I, for a long time, have argued with people on forums that, you know, the often advice is just buy new speakers, just buy better speakers up the range. But I know for a fact you can put a similar pair of speakers in the same spot in your room and you're gonna get similar bass and you're gonna get similar sound and we'll just play law of diminishing returns. And I, I, I actually don't think that's correct. I actually think, think around the product, think around the problem, don't just focus on areas that you think are gonna fix the problem. You need to focus on areas around it and try, really try and work out where the limiting factor is in the system and I'll go to a bit of lots of shows you hear you know, really expensive systems that excel in certain areas but there's flaws in the performance because again it doesn't matter how much money you spend there's still limiting factors within there that you would need to overcome to take that aspect of the performance of that system up up to where the rest of it is so you know nobody's exempt from limiting factors we've all got them everybody's got them we're all working with them or against them or around them for me the law of diminishing returns feels like a cop out that you know people can point the finger out and go, oh, okay. And to me, it's, it's kind of like burying the head in the sandness, where I feel like we should get head out of the sound and actually ha get head out of the sand and actually be focused on right. You know, if I've got a one thousand pound product and I've just spent five thousand pounds on it, why am I not hearing four thousand pounds worth of difference? Why am I not? And then don't just blame the law of diminishing returns blame everything else but the law of diminishing returns and try and work and be proactive to 
get the system or get things to a point where you hear the £4,000. So as it stands, the law of diminishing and returns, we don't think it exists. We just think there's a limiting factor for everybody in their systems and it's a case of trying to work out what that is. And what actually happens is that, you know, the limiting factor never goes away, it's always still there. But to me, it's just, it's just looking at it from a more proactive point of view as opposed to just saying, oh well, it's the law of diminishing returns, oh well. To me, that again, it's just a cop out and we should be saying, right, why have I not, I've just spent all this money, why am I not hearing it? Not that it doesn't exist, why am I not hearing it? And I think if the mindset shifted and changed and everybody felt, you know, it, it exists. There's no ifs or but, there's no law of diminishing returns. I should be hearing this, I should be hearing this value's worth of improvement, why am I not? So again, I'll, I'll address this and look at this again, maybe in a year, 18 months time, and make a follow up to it. And then 18 months time again, just to see if my view has changed. Because, you know, as it stands, I've had all different types of kit come in here. And because of that, I've been able to get better and better and better sound from the system in here. Because I've learned and I've been learning and I've been learning and I've, and I've worked out you know, where limiting factors have been and how I've made improvements based on other stuff. So being proactive with it, has allowed me to hugely improve the sound quality that I've been able to get within this room. So, just take that away with you. This is a bit of an oddball video. I'm not even dressed in the usual attire. I just thought I'd throw this out there because it's been on my mind. I've been really thinking about it and I thought it might be one of those topics that you know generates a little bit of conversation below in the, in the comments section. That would be great. What do you think about it? Do you honestly think the law of diminishing returns exists? Or have you taken on board what I've just said and think, you know, do I think the law of diminishing returns exists because I haven't actually discovered what the limiting factor of my room or my system actually is? And I've been thinking that it's law of diminishing returns, but actually now I feel that maybe I just need to get to the bottom of where the sound limitation is and fix it. So yeah, interesting topic. You know, no need to have a, like an argument or anything below in the comment section. Just want genuine comments of what people think. I, I don't know if you'll enjoy this video. It's not a huge a lot here to like, but maybe it's just give you a bit of an idea, a bit of a thought process, something to have a little, have a little think about and a natter about and a chat about. So if you did like it, please thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We do Hi-Fi AV and all different types of reviews here, Hi-Fi, Hi-Fi show visits, so loads of techie stuff, all to do with Hi-Fi and home cinema. So visit the website, see you soon in the next video. Take care, and yeah, hope this has been a bit of a, a bit of one to think about. Take care.